from uh, different versions of uh, scores transmitted, there's always that little bit of uh, improvisation touch. Of course, those get uh, recorded into uh, the scores over history because the Guqin is the, mo the most well-recorded uh, musical tradition on paper in the, uh, all of the Chinese uh, repertoire. And we can see that uh, while motifs in scores uh, persist, the variations within them uh, constantly change. But uh, more of the time, we see that uh, scores get fade out from popularity and they just simply uh, don't get transmitted in later scores. Or that uh, scores, because they were not used as a primary teaching aid, but rather as uh, an assistance to the oral tradition that, uh, fought, that uh, leads most of uh, the tradition that we get nowadays, uh, a lot of times we can only find uh, more interesting scores coming from older manuscripts. So uh, there has been a real field day within the past uh, 30 to 50 years when uh, Chinese scholars started digging out uh, old manuscripts and uh, playing the old written scores that were not uh, being passed down from the oral traditions and reviving those pieces into performance. That process is called dapu. And uh, one of the interest, uh, one of the new things that I've done with my textbook is that uh, while dapu is traditionally uh, known as a, a very exclusive process, because only Guqin masters who have uh, attained mastery of the instrument and its musical patterns can do this, now I am uh, trying to put on paper uh, this process where people just look at the fingerings of uh, the Guqin piece, which is all we get in the written tradition, and uh, trying to interpret out what makes this melody a melody. Uh, this piece was uh, chosen out from the Guqin Facebook group back in 2005 or something like that, and we have uh, scholars in Toronto, that's me, as well as Chicago and in Britain. That were in the same piece. And when we put our recordings online, we were amazed to find how different it was in terms of uh, our, in, our understanding of the score. So uh, the consensus with the Guqin world is there's no absolute standard and we simply choose which one is the most pleasing to whichever audience that uh, you may find in your area or around the world because of online. So this is the piece. It's called Wu Feng Chao, or Etude to uh, the Style of Antiquity. I will show you uh, the piece that I, my interpretation of it, and then I'll show some uh, minute details on what other people did different.
you hear just then might be a congruent tune to some case, but uh, back when we first started uh, parsing out the phrases of uh, this piece, it was really difficult because it was in a tune, uh, a musical uh, setting that is much different from the music that we hear today. So first of all, it uses a lot of low range notes and in the original score, it actually shows a lot of dissonant sounds. So for example, in the phrase that I played as which may be understandable to uh, some Guqin players, in the original score, it did not write as here, like this, but rather like so. It was actually down a semitone, and uh, this got players quite confused. They didn't know whether to de-emphasize the uh, dissonance, or to correct it, or to emphasize it because it sounds special. And uh, different players did different things, and since we had three people da pulling uh, the same piece, we had exactly those three uh, different variations. So it's all very fun. And you can see uh, why the Guxian world can be quite a tight-knit circle at times because of such. Because of uh, the different variations and interpretations from uh, the piece. Uh, but as I said, this is from uh, the research of uh, old manuscripts that uh, the piece itself was no longer transmitted down from a uh, uh, vocal, or should I say oral tradition. So what happens with the other pieces? The pieces that do get transposed down uh, by word of mouth and by teacher or student face-to-face -face practice. Uh, in turn, they get a, what they call a local flair from uh, different schools. Like uh, the martial arts world, the Guqin world has uh, been split into different regional schools. And I am lucky to have been transmitted uh, several pieces from the Sichuan school. And uh, some of these pieces that I've learned are perhaps not some of the most expressive in uh, my repertoire. And I would like to share with you one of them, uh, which I learned from Master Zhang Chengwei uh, a few years ago. The piece is called Pei Lan, Were an Orchid. Master Zhang told me uh, behind uh, the stage, behind the audience, saying that this piece he isn't particularly fond of performing because it's actually quite technically demanding. And I don't uh, disagree because this piece uh, I did not put into the book because it's uh, a little beyond the beginner's level per se. But uh, this piece is uh, special in that it utilizes a lot of uh, vocal speech-like uh, phrases that jumps around. It's not it written in the uh, score, but uh, it the piece, if no master is there to tell you, it, you won't find intricacies like these that would make uh, the piece a whole lot more uh, subtly vivace, lively. So let me show you why. Pay that. 